What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos. And today, uh, today we're going over our second Gohan deck that we're going to be piloting this weekend at Locals. Um, this is hands down, as, as much as it pains me to say this, this is 100% the worst leader in the game. Um, and there are many Gohan leaders, um, you know, in the game. But this is the only green Gohan leader that's not Reboot Gohan. So obviously in a best of one, I can't play Reboot Gohan. So this is the only other green option that I have. And I wanted to try and do a Gohan leader in every color. We did red last week. We're doing green this week. And then I have to see which is the last two or the last three, uh, depending on if I decide to play black or not, because there's only one black Gohan leader, and that's SS4. But this is by far the worst, not only the worst leader in the deck, but the worst Gohan lead, the worst leader in the game, but the worst Gohan leader ever. Like, it's garbage. So... Uh, I figured this would be the perfect opportunity for me to see what I could do, right? So we just kind of threw stuff together. There's no real specific archetype stuff going on here. It's just like a bunch of cards that I wanted to play because I haven't really played them yet. You'll see some similar cards to our previous list just because they're too good not to include. But for the most part, I'm trying to play an original 50 cards every week minus uh, Videl. You're going to see Videl in every single deck because... It makes perfect sense why she'd be in every single deck. Um, and maybe Belmont because he's just that good. But other than that, you know, let's get right into it. So the first card that we, you see there on the screen, we have Sun Goku, Power of Legend. So this came out in set 10. Um, he's pretty good. You know, if you have a green leader, when your opponent discards a card, you get to play him for free. He's a 15k critical unique, so you can only control one at a time. And uh, he has an activate main. You can send it to the warp. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards uh, with energy cost four or less and send it to the warp. So really good spot removal, really good pressure. 15k crit, you know, to deal with pretty early. There are a couple of triggers that will go off as far as discard is concerned in this game, in this deck, but not too many. It's like it's not it's not really a discard heavy deck. But if you if you have the right sequence, you can you can do a pretty nutty turn. Um and he goes perfectly in combination with the next card, which is SS3 Tag Team Gohan. Now, I had to read this guy 100 times to make sure um, that he didn't require a specific colored leader. Um, he just needs to have a black card leave by a skill. So when you go ahead and trigger your Power of Legends to send him you know, to the warp to warp a card, that's leaving by a skill. You can go ahead and play um, Tag Team from your hand for free. And it's just a 15k blocker, unique technically. Uh, doesn't have the, the keyword, but it's permanent. It says you can only control one at a time. So it's just some good defense if I have to use 15k pressure you know, for free. I'm trying to play as much for free as possible because I'm trying to be as energy efficient and keep it open for certain things that I need it for. So I'm trying to be, I'm trying to make it so that I can put threats out without having to uh, commit too much energy to it. So that's why he's in the deck. And then the next card is the two drop Vegeta. He's a skillless 20k attacker that we got in draft box six. Um, he's goes tandem with a couple of other cards in the deck, but you'll, I mean, we can go over it as we, you know, come across those targets or whatnot, but he's just your standard, um, you know, 20k vanilla attacker. Um, he doesn't really do anything special other than be a 20k vanilla attacker. Um, but he does have some synergy with Trunks. So this Trunks we also got in draft box six, Trunks change in the future. He's an Overrealm four for two energy. Auto, when you play this card using Overrealm, you can play one skillless with uh, three or less from your deck or warp, and then shuffle your deck if you look through it. So there's another Trunks. Um, I forget his name, it's escaping me, but he's a three drop over realm that he comes in for one energy that grabs a skill list out of the deck, but gives it critical for the turn. Uh, I was considering playing that, but the fact that it gives it critical means that it's no longer a skill list battle card, which is kind of important for great Saiyan number two. So you kind of want to remain skill list as much as possible, which is why we're playing changing history because he'll grab the 20 K out of the deck and he'll give you two, um, you know, he'll give you two 20k attackers on that turn. And then he's an overwhelmed tr trigger at the end of the turn. So you can trigger um, SS3 tag team if you really need to. Um, but 
I wanted to pull something out of the deck while still remaining skillless, which is the biggest reason I'm playing him, um, as opposed to uh, Time Support Trunks is the name of the card. Uh, next, we're playing Fortapion. Uh, shout out to Jacob. He's one of our local players at G Gamer's Edge. He really turned me on to this card. This card is phenomenal. Like If you're playing green, uh, he's one green energy. Uh, you discard him, draw a card, and then at the end of the turn, you play him. He's a 15k blocker. So... Again, we're, we're playing a lot of blockers that can come out for free or cheap just to have some inherent defense. But then if I really need to turn them offensively, I can if I really need to. And Tapion does draw you a card. So he technically, virtually he goes even, but economically he's a plus one because you're getting a battle card on the board and you're also drawing a new card. So technically, you know, he's a plus one because you're, you're putting something on the board and you're only using one mana to get two things out. So a battle card and another draw. Um... He's just a really cool card. Tapion's an awesome character. Uh, I'm glad that we're, we've gotten more Tapion cards in the game, but I definitely still think that we should get a Tapion leader of some kind. And for those of you in the comments who are going to rip me and say, oh, well, what about the Iron Vow Trunks? That's a Trunks leader. That's not a Tapion leader. Uh, next card is Demigra. Um, there's, real, there's no real reason I'm playing Demigra. He's just... Uh, essentially, he's a one-drop 15k attacker. And for those of you that don't know what the leader does... Uh, when you're unawakened, if you attack with this leader and you have more life than your opponent, you get to draw a card. So if you can Demigra turn one, attack 15k, force them to take a damage, and then swing with your leader, you get a lot of value that way. Um, he's an awaken at four or less, draw two, so he's an old school leader. And then on the backside, which you're probably never going to do, he has activate main. You tap six and you KO your entire your opponent's entire board, but you do choose, so it doesn't get around barrier. Um, but you have to tap six for that. So that's kind of insane back in set one days People were doing it with the Broly chain, but this this leader is just not that good uh, And then of course when when he's awakened, he's an auto attack draw card. So it's pretty generic uh, Demi girl like I said just really good because it could help you self awaken if you want him to stick around But he's also a one drop 15k essentially. That's why he's in the deck uh, Next we're playing our super combo of choice is for uh, Vegeta the Lone Prince Um Basically, he's your discard outlet. So he's a one drop. Your opponent discards a card, which triggers power of legend. And then if you're at four or less, you can use him as a super combo to draw another card to draw a card. So he gets dual dual um you know dual identity that way. He can force your opponent for discard, uh, which is gonna trigger your power of legends. Like I said, that's like basically your main um combo to do that. And tapping one for him is not that bad, especially if you're going to get a minus one out of your opponent's hand and a plus one on your board and potentially another minus off of your opponent's board with Power of Legend. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this because Lone Prince, if you have the right amount of cards in hand, he will trigger strength, uh, Power of Legends. Power of Legends will, will do whatever offensively and then get rid of spot removal and then warp itself to bring out Tag Team Gohan. So you can kind of see where I'm going with all this just to be able to commit to the board without having to tap too much energy for it. Uh, next card is Dodoria. Basic, your basic one drop, take a life, double strike. Again, in combination with the leaders on Awakened side, uh, if you're able to connect 15k double and put your opponent down from eight to six, you can then swing with your leader and draw a card. Also self-awakening in case your opponent wants to stall you out, which I don't know why they would against this leader because he's garbage. But you might come across that opponent that doesn't really know what the leader does or what you're trying to do, you know, to further your strategy we are playing the uh majin buu secret rare from set 12 i figured why not i haven't really used him in any type of deck that's not toa so i figured you know i have a green leader i do have battle cards that are going to swing he's a nice counter counter attack or counter counter rather um if um if you're swinging only with a battle card you can activate him but again you're paying three for a 40k double striker it makes perfect sense to just include him in there because you're going to at least get to three energy. Uh, four shocking death ball, standard negate of choice, sparking, and then it also has the the ability to KO one of your opponent's two drops or less, which, excuse me, which is going to trigger surprise attack Frieza. We all know surprise attack Frieza, very old card, 15k crit. You know, when one of your opponent's cards are KO'd, you can bring him in for free. He does have that pseudo unique tag. You can only control one at a time, but he is a 15k attacker with critical um bell mod you know standard if you control three guys you can ko them and bring out bell mod 
Again, Belmont's going to also trigger Frieza if you have him in hand because he comes in, KO something, and he's a 20k blocker, so he's both offensive and defensive. And now the spice of the deck or, or whatever is a Great Sandman 2, Budding Hero. Uh, I love this card coming out of Draftbox 6, but I didn't know how to utilize it that was you know not Kid Ku. Uh, and I didn't really want to go back into Kid Ku just yet because I wanted to experiment with a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to play it. Um, you don't really need to have a skillless card with a specific color as long as it's two or less. So basically what you do is you get your vanillas out with your overall trunks. You tap a green to put the skillless back in your hand. And then she comes into play and also will grab a two drop skillless from your deck or drop area. So if the combo works out properly, basically you need to have three energy to do it, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna overwhelm two for trunks, get the skillless out of your deck, swing with the skillless, tap an energy, bounce the skillless back to your hand to play budding hero. Because a black battle card was removed from the battle area with a skill, you can now trigger tag team Gohan. So you've gotten trunks, your vanilla, your budding hero, and your Gohan, that's four attackers. And auto, when Budding Hero is played, she plays another two drop from Decker Drop. So that's essentially five attackers with three energy. Um, I'm just trying to do cutesy stuff like that just to try to win the advantage game as best as I can. But I like this card a lot. Free 5k combo, green energy, worst case scenario. Uh, we already talked about Frieza. Videl, Gohan's partner. She's going to be a staple in any Gohan deck, in my opinion. She's a free blocker. It triggers Belmod. Um, if you were playing a red leader, as you guys saw with the Bernhan leader, um, you can trigger Tao to play for free. So there's just a lot of good benefits to that. She's defensive as a blocker, which is always nifty, especially if you're tapping out offensively. So free blockers are always good, in my opinion. And last but not least, we are playing one uh, Supreme Kai, E Supreme Kai, uh, for the double strike, you know, I, I feel like every deck should have at least one whether it's double strike Champa or double strike Kai Literally the only reason I'm playing Kai over Champa is because I have foil Kai's and I don't have foil Champa's um, But other than that, that's basically the deck. There's no overrealm uh, besides the trunks You know, I was thinking about maybe doing uh, Toa when she comes in. She's an overrealm three uh, she comes in, makes your opponent discard, and then gives your leader 5k. I was thinking about that. I was also thinking about early, like, set 3 Mira. Same thing, overrun for 3, discard a card from your opponent's hand. But they don't really do too much aside from that. Uh, and if Trunks is going to get you 2 bodies and start your combo off if you have, you know, the, prep, the proper pieces in hand. But, again, this is just something I like to do for fun this month. Play Gohan decks, you know, in celebration of set 13. Because we all know I'm definitely going to be playing um, Future Gohan. And I might dabble with Blue Gohan a little bit. But I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for Future Gohan. So I kind of wanted to celebrate, you know, my favorite character a little bit this month. Uh, and, yeah, you know, I'm taking it on the chin, basically. Because anybody that sits across from me at Locals this weekend is going to get a free win, right? So let's see what happens. I mean, <laughs> I've gone... I went 2-2 last weekend. If I, can, if I can win a game with this leader... I'll be super happy. Like, I'm not expecting to do anything crazy with this leader. If I could just win a game, I'd be super happy. But uh, I, I want to see everybody's face when I when they sit across from this leader and they pick it up 100 times because they don't know what it does, and even though it does nothing special. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything you would have changed to, like, make the deck, quote-unquote, better. Um, obviously, there's arguments for, like, Dormant and Charismatics, cards that I don't own, of course, but I wanted to play you know, not good or bad cards on purpose just to see how everything fit. Um, you know, just because it's more fun to me and it's more challenging in the deck building process. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with all of your friends in the world and let them know about the movement here at No Counters, No Combos. We really do appreciate the support. Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything No Counters, No Combos. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Be there or be squared.